Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is preseason football on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be a great matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cleveland Browns. So with that, let's get up to First Energy Stadium in Cleveland. For the call, we welcome in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club, and I don't think from what we saw down on the field before the game, there's any doubt they're ready to roll. They pass the eye test, don't they? This team looks fired up and ready to play. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Eagles, an early season tilt, and when it's an early season tilt, should be ready to roll. Well, let's face it, the aches and pains haven't really set in yet, and both teams eyeing a really good start to get things going. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So now here comes the Eagles offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their 6'5 quarterback out of North Dakota State. It's Carson Wentz. He didn't have as many throws or plays in college as many of the quarterbacks that were coming out in the draft, but he maximized what he had. Ended up winning two national championships as a starting quarterback in North Dakota State. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> Wentz now on first down. Caught by the tight end Ertz. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Here's the offense, and sometimes you got to show love to the big guys. That you do. And we're talking about Jason Kelsey now. Not Travis, his brother, who plays tight end. Jason lines up at center, a threat to go to the Pro Bowl each and every year. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Watch a slap, watch a slap, watch a slap. First down, Eagles. Play fake to Sanders. Now here's Wentz. He's got a right, and that's caught inside the 30. It's a game of 35. Let's go. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, Defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a start right out of them. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. On first and 10, it's Sanders. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And here's the starting crew defensively for Cleveland. Olivier Vernon is a defensive end that combines terrific run-stopping ability with a quick first step to the passer. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. That's complete to a speedy wideout Goodwin. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not have pressure and he'll go down. Back at the 26 yard line. Larry Ogan Joby in for the sack. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between let them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? Absolutely huge with the play he just made. Yeah, you know, he hated taking the loss there on third down. 
So it'll remain to be seen how many drives this unit gets in, this being the preseason, but here they start with three points. Yeah, I don't know that we'll actually see them anymore. They got three points on the board, one drive here in preseason in this game. Baseball caps, NFL approved, of course, for everyone. This will be fielded at the eight. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. They'll be led out by the number one overall pick in the 2018 draft, the Oklahoma Sooner, Baker Mayfield. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Get that quarterback! Get off the What's that? <laughs> Throwing Mayfield, and he's got the hook up to Landry. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Here we go. Switch, switch, switch. Done, I'm done. And this will be incomplete. Physical play in the football there, and it's second down. This offense has a lot to account for, but at the top of the defense's list is OBJ. I'm not sure how you really game plan for him, because no matter what you do, he finds a way to uncover himself downfield. And the speed gets it from his mom, a former sprinter at LSU. First carry for Nick Chubb. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. Mayfield looks to throw. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. I absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air. And that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. I got you. I got you. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin. But it'll be second down. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he takes this just about a yard shy of the 20. Here we go. It's Here a we gain go. of 13 Here and a go. first down for Philadelphia. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And now following that sack, looks like we've got an injured man down there on the field. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Second and 15. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Man open, it's Goodwin. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. We hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. 
But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first down. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards. And it's second and two. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. Now Mayfield lost the football. And it's picked up by the Eagles. And he'll take this down inside the 15 yard line. We got no coach or team's ever happy when someone has a turnover, but if there's ever a good time to do it, preseason. <laughs> yeah, right now. You know that in come regular season, he's going to be ready to go, and maybe he'll remember, yeah, I don't want to do this when it comes time for the games to count. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurry. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete. Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. And if that continues, they have a chance of winning this one. Let's go, one, three. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. The Cleveland offense ready to go. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try to move the football. Second and seven. Go, tackle, let's go. We got this. We got this. Now Mayfield. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Mayfield the throw. To the right side and he's got Landry complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And a run past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. Well, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 42-yard line. A run for Nick Chubb. And an alley to run. And he's taken down inside the 30. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. 
Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going in there, controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage. We got the defensive front backwards. That's a lot of the runners giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Here's second and ten now from the 29. Mayfield. That is caught inside the five. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Jarvis Landry, 29 yards. And the Browns have taken the lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Austin Seibert on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So now a seven-play, 80-yard drive. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Browns defense getting ready. And we're going to get a peek at some of the hits that have helped them get this first half lead. And you know how the best hits happen? By being really good on that side of the ball in terms of fundamentals. Being in the right spot. Diagnosing plays well. And being there at the point of attack. They are really making it happen. The Eagles offense have to begin their next drive. And they have to feel like they missed on an opportunity for points last time when they couldn't connect on that short field goal try. And no doubt about it, because they were counting on those points. In today's NFL, that's, that's really a chip shot, right? That's anything inside for it. Yeah, they, they're counting on that going through the post. But we've seen it happen to teams before. Some of the best kickers in the world can miss kicks like that. Can they come Let's back go. now and redeem themselves? It's an Eagles first down on a gain of 11. Come on. This quarterback first now down. just three of six throw it, but that last completion gets a first down. They run on first down as they get about three. Second and seven, fourth coming. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Here's a second and seven. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. Here's Matt Wild now as he'll punt it away for the second time. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Now look at this, fourth and 12, and they're going to line up to go for it. They'll try and throw for it here. Going down the middle. It's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield get before being ready. stopped just get before ready. the 35. 21 yards there. A big play on fourth down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. His throw incomplete. 
fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. Looking to throw. And that's knocked away and incomplete. Kevin Johnson, former first-round pick there defensively. The goal of anyone running a curl route is to make sure you try and get defenders on your back and shield them away from the football. But sometimes even when you run a good route, the defense finds a way to knock it away. NFL kickers nowadays, they make things look so easy because normally from this range, about two out of three. And this is not an easy kick. Yeah, 20 years ago, you get where he was in that 50 range, maybe a little over. And uh, it's a big kick, but now we... Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Jim Boy. When we talk about players blitzing all the time, I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, he really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop it. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Barkley. He completes it to Bryant. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the let's 45. Go, go, a good pick up there on 20 yards. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folding like a lawn chair. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. On second and 11 now. Barkley, complete to Bryant. And he'll be brought down. That's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call Get nowadays, ready. but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Rip. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Hey, let's go. On second down and four. Barkley. This is the tight end, the Joku. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. First target, first catch, and a first down. Hey, defense, let's go. Pick it up, kid. From the gun, Barkley. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11 yard line. Well, that was point counterpoint, wasn't it? They decided to throw for it on first and goal. Instead, the defense counters with pressure, and the defense wins, getting a big sack. Ready? Moved back to the 10. Goal. They'll try on second and goal here. Watch the twist, watch the twist. Ready, ready. They'll run with Hunt on second down. Oh, and he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Here's Seibert now to add the extra point. And this one's running through to make it a 14-3 ball game. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And it fights through one man. 
And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, but the conclusion we draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. 17 yards and a first down for Philly. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. Two yards on the pick out there. It'll be second and eight. There's second and eight. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 36. They'll set up a throw. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Andrew Bennett able to drop him for a loss of four from his defensive tackle spot. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect it. Now, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Now on third and long, they look to throw. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Quarterbacking 101, never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And he connects with Ertz. That pickup goes for 25. What a flip of the script from fourth down to first. It's got to the point where we see guys like that make that type of a catch. Not fair goes through my brain. That size, that speed, and now they're acting like wide receivers yeah, too. Yeah, tight end one-handed catches. They're kind of like wide receiver one-handed catches nowadays. Just not right. This quarterback now, 8 of 15 through the air, but it's first and 10 here. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Andrew Billings, his second sack of the night. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. Eagles on third down. They're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. This will be third and six. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Andrew Sendejo swoops in for the sack. I'm starting to wonder if this offensive line just simply doesn't like him. I mean, they've given up six sacks in this game. He's had nowhere to go, nowhere to run, and obviously nowhere to hide. And all those sacks in the first half, this is just complete domination. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle, right? No big plays given up, no balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on, chestnuts? Oh, you like Come that on. one? What is that? Who broke out the 
Oh, just because you're, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24 yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn into a play action, and throw one deep. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at halftime, I'll go from one personality, that's you, Charles Davis, to another one in Orlando, the coach. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL. You and Jonathan Coachman, both larger than life. No doubt about it. But you're stuck with me in this booth, and he's miles away and smiling. And happy. They face a third and four after that last completion gets him six. Here's Barkley, and that is incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Vincent Mayola in there to drop him, and that is the seventh time tonight that he has gone down. A throw over the middle, taken in. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. to go in the first half. tackled at the Browns 20 yard line from the red zone now they look to throw this is brought in by Gibson and stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three the Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half two big plays in succession not sure this D knows what hit them but now they got to get ready it's first and goal they look to throw here Complete with 11 seconds remaining now. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. Second and three. His pass caught with the four. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Dallas Goddard in the final seconds of the first half as his guys have cut the lead down to two. That's one of the better examples of clock management I've seen. Whittled it all the way down just about and still put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, just a methodical drive and something really to take into the lockers here. Let's 
Doug Peterson says, let's go for two here. Back to throw again. The quick slant caught. And he is into the end zone. So they get two more on the board here just before halftime. He hits the big target for the two-point try. <laughs> Defenses hate those guys, especially around the goal line. It's hard to decide who you're going to put on him. Are you going to put a smaller corner on him? Are you going to put a safety who doesn't have maybe the same coverage skills? How about a linebacker who may have the size, but he's not used to really covering in space? That's why the tight end gives you such a great advantage when you're throwing the football. A second quarter onside kick there that failed. Is that something that maybe they had dialed up before this game started? It feels like it, doesn't it? That they thought they had the right situation, you know, and, and the right approaching going after it also may signal that they feel like they have a superior team, that they can try these sorts of things, and it won't come back and hurt them later. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in just a minute. As we've started the countdown to opening night, three more weeks of preseason action follow this, and then we get it all started less than one month from tonight. In our game, at the very least, you can't say it's not competitive. All tied up at halftime. And for the call of the second half, we get you back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Probably not likely to see many starters in the second half as we get back at it underway in this preseason opener. Let's go, boys! Go! The Cleveland offense ready to go. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect. But overall, you like what your game plan showing you. Well, they have the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Second and 10. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. That was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the short catch and put the down marker back to win. Now it's all here going to be taken in by the tight end, Njoku. And we'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. On the ready. I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. Operating from the gun. Barkley. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. And he has it on first down as they get the ball down to the Eagles 43. Gotta say, I was a little surprised to see him Charles come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're gonna throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Shoot. On first and ten, Barkley. And he's going to dump this off to his running back, Hunt. It's a gain of seven, and it'll bring up a second down. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss, and they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Ready, ready. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Ready. Looking to throw. Barkley. Man open. That's Damian Radley. And he will have the first down. He winds up taking a pretty good shot that time. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. Off the bootleg. Barkley. 
And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Throwing again on second and 10. Barkley got an open man. It's Radley. Turn sets him up pretty good here at the 30 yard line. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point but it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. Now a man open down the middle of the field. They'll get yes. nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Came up a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it. Leaving him with his third and one. They'll try and run here with Clement. Now he will have a first down here at about the 40. Got what he needed for the first down with a gain of two. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football. The one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pick up there was big because they'd struggled throughout this one. Now a throw left sideline here is complete. A gain of six there on first. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given a little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. They're going to look to throw. Over the middle, complete. That's Gibson. And he needed to get to the midfield strike, but he can't do it. He's about a yard short. two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. And this is incomplete. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out. And the Browns are going to get this thing back. Excellent field position. But being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. Good defense, you got me? A little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. 
And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. I get a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, well, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. On first down, they'll run with Hunt. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Let's go. 50, plant. 59. You better bring it. You better bring it. Go. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And they get him behind the line. So that short gain on first down quickly negated. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Throwing on third and long. Barkley. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Coverage was excellent downfield. I think he was more throwing that football yeah. away than anything else. Yeah, absolutely, because everywhere he looked, they were covered. Sometimes it's better to go ahead and be convinced that there's no place to fit in the football than to go ahead and force it and turn it into a bad play. Could not have thrown that out there any better. When the ball hit the ground, I thought it might go into the end zone the way it was angling, but perfectly jutting out at the one. You think maybe what we saw in practice came into play there? You know, he put those big cans down on the sideline and then angled for them and then shot for them. Looks like it worked out pretty well for him, too. Back to throw now in his own end zone. Over the middle into traffic, and that's complete. And he's only able to get it to right around the three. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. He lost two there, and it's third down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they can use something here on third down. They'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll get inside the 10, but he's short of the line he needed. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of the first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Shoot! Now Barkley. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. A gain of six there on first. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Second and four. And his throw is incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Ready, ready! From the gun on third down. Barkley. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. The Eagles in good position to start out as they come up first and 10 at their 38. This is Clement, and he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Oh, yeah! Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe you change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll lead them try to convert on third and nine. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Larry Hogan 
Jovi bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. Here's Matt Wild now as he's on to punt for Philadelphia. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Off play action. Barkley. This is the tight end, the Joku. He's going to be out of bounds on what's going to wind up being the final play of quarter number three. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. Seven now. Here's second and three. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. So first and ten now from the 30. First and ten. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Well, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And there was some of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Malik Jackson, the 6'5 D tackle with a sack. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number, and we can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Back to throw. Barkley. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. The Browns on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and a mile. Looking to throw. Barkley. Yeah, he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them, because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here's Jamie Gillen down. He's been terrific so far. And he gets this away. Look at this. This is a good one. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Eagles. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Hey, four down, four down. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Going to go to Clement here out of the backfield. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Chad Thomas bringing the power of the sack. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Well, they were coming out of a 3 defensively. Pressure coming off that right side of the end. And that's the blind side of most quarterbacks. If you're right-handed, that's the side you don't see quite as well. 
and that's why you rely on your left tackle, maybe your highest paid offensive lineman to take care of you. In this situation, that didn't happen. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion from people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Now a quick slant as the throw is complete. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackle there. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't they? Did their job force the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you get the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. A nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. The Browns on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is going to be third. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Well, certainly some teams are not intimidated by down and distance on defense, are they? Third and very long? <laughs> Let's go get this guy again. Big time pressure. Well, this is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now from all the work he's getting. Back to throw now on second and ten. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. A gain of four on the play, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Now back to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Vincent Mayola in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you get three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here comes the Browns' offense back on the field. They got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. The big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. The big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely look for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. It's a big game. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. This is Hunt. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. A gain of three and second down. <laughs> On second and seven. Barkley. And this is incomplete. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, a big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? On third down, here's Hunt. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one. and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, blood a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, 
You go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Try to lay one up deep, and that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. He'll drop to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. They're giving those short little routes, tackled him in bounds, too. They're just not going to get beat over the top. Yeah, and if you can't really get downfield, take the short routes. But now you've got to have guys who can actually break tackles and increase those gains. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 41-yard line. They'll look to throw. And a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. It's caught at the 10. It's a gain of 34. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Trying to go back to Watkins, but it'll be second and goal. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Second and six. And he finds his tight end. It's Ertz. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. It'll be a loss of one. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They've got a third and goal now as they try to punch in a late touchdown. Back to throw here. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three, and not giving up six. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way, now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position with all three timeouts. I kick it deep and try to put him back there. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shot at the 23-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And this game not quite over yet. We'll likely see him take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Ready, ready. Not totally home it's free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. I'm going back to you. And... <laughs> that run, this is Hunt. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Even though we're not on the goal line, this is essentially a goal line look as they come up for second down. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Come on, back. 70, Indy. Tackles, tackles. Deep grip, deep grip. Now it's Hunt. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Seven yards on the carry there, but now they're staring at fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it, get the first down, close it out. He looked to throw. He's gonna find his running back, it's complete. And he's going to lose yardage here. Back to his own 18. 
It's a loss of two there, bringing out Sagan down. Back to three. Goes against the grain here. It totally goes against it, but you've got to drop the ball in that situation. He makes a catch, but he loses yards and doesn't get out of bounds. A game there of 30 big ones. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still. You're wondering, could it happen, possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound, as we say.